Hello and welcome to this week's DIY with Jaja Creations and Designs. I'm Sierra, the owner and creator of JJCD, as we call it for short around here. And I'm creating this mini series to show you all the little tips and tricks and projects that I've done to turn this old drab porch into a nice little oasis. And I'm going for some hippie and boho chic vibes. So I hope that comes across in my photo. If not, let me know below in the comments because I got some work to do, right? All right, so before we get started on making this DIY hammock chair for anywhere in your house or outside, anywhere you, you can put it that will support your weight, you're good to go. So before we get started, go ahead and like this video so other people can see it and share it with your friends. Or you can subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of every week's projects that I will be, re be releasing on Mondays. So let's get started, y'all. Alright, to start with, we're going to go over the materials. And of course, we're going to need some fabric. But you're going to need two yards of an outdoor fabric. It can be a duck cloth or a canvas material. Um, it will have outdoor or indoor outdoor on the fabric bolt when you're getting it. You're also going to need your sewing supplies, such as a sewing machine, um, clips, you're going to need some thread. You can coordinate it to your fabric. Um, I honestly didn't because it's so unnoticeable anyway, but the gray really, I guess that's because what's that, that's what I had in there and it blends with about everything. So you're also going to need a water soluble pen. You can get this in the sewing section or you can use a really light colored washable marker or some chalk. Um, you're going to need your measuring tape, some scissors. You're also going to need a yardstick so you can draw your lines, your cut lines. Um, moving on to the hardware. You are going to need a 3 8 inch spring link and this one has a 425 pound weight load. You can find all of these at your local hardware store. Um, next you are going to need a 3 8 inch eye bolt. This one has a weight load of 160 pounds. It's the highest that I could find. And then your fender washers are optional. Our rafters are exposed, so we put one on the top and the bottom of the rafter on the eye bolt to disperse some of the weight um, coming from the hammock. And then you're going to need a 3 8 inch twisted nylon rope. I just got a white. This is 50 foot. You'll need about 14, but I start with about 16 feet just to give myself some wiggle room it's easier to cut it off later than it is to add it if you need it you're also going to need a wooden dowel this is a one and a quarter inch or one and a half inch oak dowel it is 36 inches or three foot you're going to need a drill with a 3 8 inch. If you have a drill that will handle a half inch bit, go ahead and use the half inch bit. Um, that will be for drilling the holes into your dowel. And that should be all the materials you'll need. And if there are any uh, that we use in the video that I forgot to mention I will list those down in the description Now when it comes to cutting your fabric when you roll it off the bolt 
there's two ways that you can fold this. There's the short stumpy way. So you can see that it's just not as long this way. It's longer with my arm spans. Or you can fold it long and skinny like this. How it comes off the bowl. That's how it usually comes off the bowl. With your selvage ends on one side and fold it down the center. Now, I fold it the short stumpy way. That way I have a wider chair. If you fold it the long and skinny way, you're going to have a narrow but deeper chair. So when you fold it, I do the short stumpy, I fold it in half. And you'll measure, once you have it folded in half, you'll have a nice rectangle. This one's already cut because that footage just didn't work. So I will show you the best I can with this. You'll have a perfect rectangle and you'll measure from your folded end 40 inches over to your open end make a mark at that 40 inches if you can't make 40 inches then 37 anywhere between 37 and 40 inches will work and then you'll come all the way down to the bottom part of your fold and you are going to make a diagonal line all the way down from your 40 inch mark or 37 whatever you whatever you decided all the way down to where it almost meets the other corner and this is going to give you an angled cut with a narrower top and a really wide bottom it's kind of going to be a trapezoid i think and i don't think i can get it all on camera it'll be like a trapezoid now we are going to sew all of these raw edges to clean them up and get ready to do the rest of it. All right. So now we are going to press all of our hems. That way it makes it easier to sew. I just clipped um, at the half inch mark and I'm going to just roughly run this down about that half inch mark because it will kind of automatically fold once you get it started. So we're going to do this all the way around. until it looks which honestly I'm probably going to do this one a little bit farther yeah that way this doesn't show one more time let's just press there so then We'll double it over. Okay. And that's how it will look all the way around when we are finished. When you're sewing this, you are going to want to run two stitches 
or two rows of stitches, um, it's going to give it a lot more support. Now we have all of our hems pressed and they're ready to sew. On the top and the bottom, which is are going to be your narrow and your wide portions, you're going to do a double hem so you'll fold it over. And I did just follow the line of the selvage edge and then folded it over again. And your angled edges you're just going to fold it over once because we're going to be folding that over again later. Now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and get this sewed up. over the rope like that and then you'll be able to sew and I'm actually going to make this one how big is that I'm gonna go to about one and a half inches and that'll give me enough space to run a double stitch down through here to keep the rope in there nice and securely. All right, so let's head over to the sewing machine again and get these slips or sleeves sewn for our rope. We're almost there. Alright, so now we have our hem sewed. We've sewed it one time on the side that we're going to fold over here in just a few minutes to make our little sleeve for the rope to go through on both sides. And then on the top and the bottom, we have two rows of stitches. And it'll be nice and sturdy. We have a narrow end and we have a wide end so now we're going to go back to the sewing machine Okay, so now we have all the hem sewn. We have our little pockets or sleeve, sleeves for our rope here. They go all the way down. We still have our trapezoid shape, which is crucial to make the seat of the chair. Now we are going to head outside. I'm gonna put this aside, don't need it right now. I'm gonna head outside and drill some holes. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and measure. A spot for two inches. one 
hole is going to go, and then we have a spot for four inches. That's where the other hole is going to go. I'm going to do that on both sides. Got those marked. Now we're going to go out, drill them, and we'll be able to put this beautiful hammock chair together. So we are almost done putting this hammock chair together. I'm out here. I have got 20 foot of rope measured out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Something I didn't mention earlier was packing tape or some kind of tape and this will keep your ends from unraveling while you're threading it and it makes it easier to thread everything. So you'll just wrap your ends I've got 20 foot here it might be too much but better too much than too little right? Alright and this was the end, like at the factory edge. So now I'm going to find the center of this just by holding on to these ends and then feeding it through my hand. And just making sure that I keep them taut whole time. Alright, so we got that. And I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot into this so it doesn't slip around. Just a regular overhand knot because your hook will slide around. Alright, so we've got our knot. Now I'm going to get a stool. And the fun part. I knocked my plant over. Uh, my least favorite part. <sighs> We need to have a pen handy so we can mark where we are going to tie our knots. Take our wooden dowel. Our rope split. Now we are going to thread 
this side through this first hole right here and or the inside hole right here so I'll have this hole left we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side right here so I will take this corner and it goes in this hole We know we don't want it this low. I do it about my height. That way I'm not hitting my head or anything when I'm going to sit in it. Alright. Another way that I've used to mark these is just by using some more packing tape. But you also want to make sure your rope is even. And that looks about right. Alright. Keep that spot. I'm just going to pull these together so it pinches this. I'm just going to make a mark. Just like that. Swing it around. Do the same thing on this side. Just make a mark. So you can see about where to put that mark, the knot. I think. And so we're between 26 and 27. So honestly, I'm just going to 26 and 27 inches from the bottom of the knot to my marks. So I'm going to average it and tie my knots at 26 and a half inches. Can get tricky with one person. Now let's see which one was my higher knot. I should have marked that. Okay, all right, this one is the lower, so we need to go about a half an inch down. So it's going to be like right in here. Uh, I have to wait till my husband gets back. <laughs> So just a standard overhand knot. You don't want to pull it too tight yet. That way you can give yourself some room for adjustment. We needed it. Let's see. Here's that mark. We're gonna walk it up. Just right about there. Just pull it tight. Alright, now we're going to put over. Do the same thing over here. This was the lower one, so we're going to come up just a little bit higher than that. Mark, about a half an inch above that mark. Half an inch above it, so it's going to be in. And there we have to start to our swing guys <laughs> okay okay so important part here do not thread with the wide side up you want to thread the narrow side up because that's the back now I did use Okay, so you can thread this through. Feeling like I used something else last time. Oh yeah, I used a wooden dowel. You can tape the ends of these to a wooden dowel and it makes this a lot quicker. And you want to put this facing out because that's going to be the front of your seat or you can do that, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it because that's your sewn edges. So thread it like this. Get bunched up somewhere. Alright, here we go. 
you know, to hold this in place, I just go ahead and thread it up. And just kind of loop it. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. Just make sure your fabric's not twisted or anything, because then you're going to have to unthread it and then rethread it, and that's no fun. All right. You can take this down if you want to while you are threading this bit. So it's not swinging around on you, but it kind of calms itself down after a few seconds. All right, this side's going to be a little bit more stubborn, it seems like. I might have to go get my wooden nail. threatened it and it started doing what I wanted it to. And we're close enough I think I can reach it. Yep. Yeah. Alright. Oversized? Yes. Comfortable? Oh yeah. Alright. See, extra rope, but you know, that's okay. It's totally okay. Well, now we're going to adjust where we want our seat at. All right, tie your knot. Something tells me we're going to have to fix that a little bit, but that's okay. Easier to tie a couple knots and untie a couple knots than it is to have to rethread this whole thing. If I say it again, I'll probably end up jinxing myself. Make sure, just make sure. I busted my butt one too many times with this, these. There, all right, so it might be a little bit high. I don't know yet. 